all governments are immoral and criminal institutions because they force everyone under threat of violence to pay mandatory taxes for life. There are hundreds of taxes, from property tax to income tax to inheritance tax. You must pay them all, or else the government will use the power and force of its machinery to seize your bank account, garnish your wages, and or arrest you and put you in jail. How is that any different than the Mafia? Governments demand we pay our dues regularly, promise us we'll be safe and protected if we do, and if we don't, agents come around to shake us down or put us away. If taxes were voluntary, then governments wouldn't automatically be immoral or criminal because they would be completely funded by donation only, thus their very existence limited by voluntarism. If governments actually did a good job and spent our money wisely, then people might willingly donate for social programs, roads, schools, etc. But when taxes are compulsory, and a huge percentage of them goes towards lining the pockets of politicians, I can't help but think privatization of social programs, road construction, schools, and everything else the government unsatisfactorily provides us would be better for society by letting the free market and small communities and neighborhoods decide instead of our immoral criminal governments. Another mandatory tax and despicable limitation that all governments enforce is our natural right to international travel. In reality, the world is one undivided whole. All divisions, such as countries and borders, are merely man-made thought constructs with no reality outside our minds. They are just arbitrary lines drawn on a map that governments are constantly changing. But everyone has to be born somewhere, so governments quickly brand you with the curse of nationality the instant you are born. Now I am American because I was born within the arbitrary borders of the fictional construct known as America. Since I'm American, but I've made the decision to live outside the arbitrary borders of the fictional construct I was born in, Thailand, I have a whole new series of taxes and government mandates that apply. I am required to carry around an expensive microchipped passport identification and check in with the immigration office every three months to fill out some paperwork and give them more money. Every six months to a year, I'm required to cross the arbitrary borders of the fictional construct known as Thailand into a neighboring tax farm's embassy, where I must fill out more paperwork and give them yet more money for temporary visa stamps in my passport. To work abroad, governments require us slaves to submit work permits and pay annually for the privilege. The taxes and headaches never end. Thanks to being American, I'm actually lucky that I can live abroad at all and should be happy. Many people from less fortunate tax farms are completely restricted from traveling to or working in other more fortunate tax farms. Another one is land rights. How can you honestly claim to be a landowner when you have to pay property taxes every year for as long as you own it? If you own it, why do you still have to pay annual rental fees? The government holds the allodial titles and just issues you a slave deed. They maintain eminent domain and can plow over your home to build a highway any time they please. Name one thing that governments provide that people couldn't do better, easier, and more efficiently, privately, at the community level. Name one reason why we have to run this never-ending hamster wheel of government mandate and taxation. There is nowhere on earth you can go that isn't controlled by a statist government. Every piece of land has been divided up and claimed by 196 nations, all of which are controlled by some form of forced governance. There is nowhere left on earth that sovereign, freedom-loving individuals can go live freely without a mafioso government forcing them to pay taxes and obey laws. No matter whether you live under a monarchy, an oligarchy, or a republic, whether it's called democracy, communism, socialism, or fascism, all current forms of government initiate and mandate violence and slavery upon their populations. We are all slaves to our governments because every nation forces under threat of violence and kidnapping that we must pay them a percentage of our income. In some countries, like Thailand, it's around 30%. America, 40 to 50%. France is around 60% not to mention hundreds of other smaller mandatory taxes which raise these figures even higher. So if the definition of slavery is forcefully taking 100% of someone's income, what is it called when governments forcefully take 60% of someone's income? Is that not slavery? What if they only take 30%? Is that still slavery? We are taught in school that slavery ended long ago, and it is universally understood that slavery is immoral. 
but if governments still are forcibly taking even 1% of their population's income, that is still slavery, and even 1% slavery is immoral. The very definition of the word government is mind control, and the vast majority of people worldwide, public and private sector alike, are absolutely mind controlled by their governments, medias, and education systems to believe that their statist government is a moral and altruistic institution that exists for the benefit of the people. The reality is, of course, the opposite. The reality is that all nations are like open-air slave plantations, allowing their indentured servant populations to choose their occupation, giving the illusion of freedom, then swooping in on payday to steal the fruits of your labor. This is why all governments are criminal and immoral, and why the only system of just governance is anarchism, agorism, or voluntarism. There is no political solution to the problem of government. Voting for a new ceremonial figurehead every four years has never, will never, and could never create any significant lasting positive change because governments cannot be improved or made moral from within. There are too many vested interests and no statist system, be it monarchy, oligarchy, communism, democracy, republic, or dictatorship, none of them respect the right of the individual to opt out of being governed. When the mafia comes around to your business, they always befriend and promise to protect you, providing you pay and obey them. If you refuse to comply, however, the mafia burns your business to the ground. Similarly, all statist governments promise to help and protect their populations, as long as we pay and obey. But if we don't, then they seize our asses and our assets and throw us in prison. The whole problem is giving one privileged class the legal right and obligation to commit violence and coercion against the rest of the population. All governments around the world initiate the use of violence in the form of police and coercion in the form of taxes against their populations, and this is absolutely immoral and unacceptable. Consensual sex is moral because it is voluntary, whereas rape is immoral because it's forced. Similarly, things like charity donations and the free market are moral because they are voluntary, whereas theft and taxation are immoral because they are forced. The root problem festering within all governments around the world is not the rife internal corruption or criminality. Those are merely symptoms and side effects of statism. The paramount problem with government is that its mandates are mandatory. Its compulsions are compulsory. For governments to be moral institutions, all taxes and interactions must be made voluntary. If governments are honestly in existence for our benefit, then they must be voluntary and never initiate the use of force against their populations. That kind of authoritarian violence and coercion is not allowed or acceptable in any other facet of our lives. We wouldn't put up with it. So why do we sheepishly line up to vote for a new puppet president every four years, thinking they are somehow going to make the mafia moral? Simply working for the government, whether you're a soldier, policeman, politician, or otherwise, your salary comes from the taxes the population are forced to pay, making you a criminal by proxy. Thus working for statist governments, like working for the mafia, is immoral and criminal because your paycheck comes from stolen money. In other words, all governments, everyone working for them and benefiting from their social programs, are like getaway drivers in a robbery. They may not have personally stolen your money, but your money is right there in their pockets, so who is responsible if not them? I'm not a fan of isms, but the second you express a sound idea, the establishment is quick to rebrand your revolution and assimilate your inspiration into an ism they can control. For instance, anarchy, a once respectable term simply meaning without rulers, advocating society without government, has long been rebranded hand in hand with chaos, wearing bandana face masks, throwing Molotov cocktails. The actual idea of non-violent sovereign societies, enlightened and capable beyond the need for statist governments, however, is certainly ideal, and not chaos. The terms agorism and voluntarism are similar ideas advocating only voluntary interactions between people and the state. Call it what you will, anarchism, agorism, voluntarism, or just keep it simple and call it freedom. It is the missing ingredient in all governments and the root of all state corruption and criminality. If people want to have a bureaucracy of diplomats creating a bunch of social programs for their benefit, what governments claim to be, then that's fine. But just because some guy in a suit wrote something on a piece of paper doesn't make it mandatory. And just because the mafia says you'd better pay up doesn't mean you should. 
Our current so-called justice system is such an unenlightened corrupt farce that the entire edifice should be relegated to the history books. Humanity desperately needs to reconsider the idea that justice is somehow served by systematically fining, caging, or killing criminals. The idea that we should pay and empower unaffected parties to deliver standardized punishments, and the idea that police are anything but violent and coercive policy enforcers of our statist mafia governments. Today there are literally millions of laws and legislations on record in the United States alone, and under the current official edict, ignorance of these laws is no excuse for disobeying. Therefore, all citizens are legally bound, under threat of theft, kidnapping, and imprisonment, to read, remember, understand, and obey millions of ever-increasing laws, or else. Millions of nitpicking restrictions our nagging nanny state has decided us children must completely refrain from under any circumstance, or else receive severe punishment. Ridiculous things with no ill-affected party, such as the consumption of cannabis, a naturally growing plant that governments all over the world have deemed evil enough to cage you in prison for decades should you dare allow the weed's demon seed to take root in your soil. Such laws are nothing but anti-freedoms written by people so far above the law that they can write the laws. But surely we need some form of law and order, court system, and police protection, everyone cries out in knee-jerk unison. Here is all we need. Common law courts, which settle lawful disputes between two affected parties regarding matters of injury, theft, or breach of contract. That is all. No state agents, district attorneys, or police enforcing statutes and codes. No maritime admiralty or other kangaroo courts. The only disputes which require the kind of mediation provided by courts and judges are those between two affected parties in the case of harm to one's person or property, theft, or breach of contract, the holy trinity of common law. Everything which requires court mediation falls within these three simple categories, and anything beyond or outside these categories are victimless crimes involving no injured party and have no business being called law. By eliminating these millions of laws and leaving only three would so drastically reduce the amount of court cases per district per year that they could be run very cheaply in a voluntarist society. Eliminating these millions of laws would also reduce the amount of people in prison by over 90%. America currently houses 25% of the world's prisoners, yet Americans themselves account for only 5% of the world population. Over 2 million in a population of 300 million, meaning almost 1% of the entire U.S. population is currently living in cages, and over 90% of these for victimless crimes. The insane way these people are being treated is disgusting, and society has turned a collective blind eye to their plight. Meanwhile, the injustice system also goes to great lengths protecting truly evil people from receiving what they deserve. Recently in Thailand, a man shot and killed his wife point-blank for ignoring him and chatting online messenger too often. He then proceeded to kill his mother-in-law, and when his son came to investigate, he shot him too. He then fired another round in all of them to make sure they were dead. When his daughter came home, he contemplated killing her, but after much begging and pleading decided to spare her life and instead just stole her gold necklace to help finance his escape. When police finally caught him, they forced him to do a reenactment of the entire murder at the scene of the crime, as they always do here in Thailand, and 200 angry neighbors stormed in to try to hang him to death. It took 50 police officers to stop the 200 villagers from doing what all of them deemed just and necessary, which is banding together to end the life of this heartless psychopath who killed three members of their village. Had these 50 police state agents not been there to protect this murderer of innocent women and children from his enraged community, this spontaneously formed jury of 200 of his peers surely would have hung him or beat him to death. In a natural tribal society, that is certainly what would have happened. His community would have collectively decided his fate based on each member's willingness to forgive or to engage in some act or form of retribution. Now, instead, he will be taken through the modern criminal justice system, which means rather than being hung or stomped to death by his legitimately livid peers, he is protected and caged by government mafia thugs, while all affected parties are dragged through years of appeals, draining everyone's savings, waiting for the final judgment of some Freemason in a white powder wig and black dress, banging a wooden hammer, yammering on about order and honor. 
the entire thing is a corrupt farce, as for example, in the case of eight and nine-year-old satanic ritual abuse victims Gabrielle and Alyssa Dearman, they are being raped and kidnapped by the very state police and social service workers who are supposed to be protecting them and pursuing justice. How can justice ever be served when the courts, lawyers, judges, and police are more corrupt than the average street criminals on trial? As I wrote in my book Asbestos Head, Laws leave crime victims powerless to right their own wrongs the way they see fit, and instead pay and empower unaffected people to enforce standardized punishments. If someone lies to, steals from, cheats, kidnaps, rapes, or murders someone I know, then me, my friends, and my family deserve to deliver the punishment. Not only that, but in these intense situations, me, my friends, and my family do not want to sit still and wait for cops to do the best they can with what the law provides. We're going to do the best we can with what God provides and use our God-given freedom to enforce our own ethics, whether it's retribution or forgiveness. Justice should be whatever just us decide. Suppose I watch you kill my daughter. The law says for me to leave you be, call the police, collect evidence, consult a lawyer, then testify to a box of peers who'll hopefully lock you away through years of appeals until finally you get the death penalty or die of old age. If instead I do the natural thing in such a situation and kill you myself, then it's your daughter's turn to collect evidence, consult the lawyer, testify to a box of peers who'll keep me in and out of appeals, each one feeding the system, paying police and judicial employee paychecks, greasing those greedy wheels of status justice with years of our grief just for doing the just thing. Furthermore, suppose I watch you kill my daughter, and instead of wishing you dead, instead of pursuing retribution of some sort, Suppose I wish to take the highest moral ground and end the cycle of suffering, to stop the continuation of evil with my unconditional forgiveness. Suppose I wish to pardon you from all punishment, I wish you no harm, and that your family need not grieve the way ours does. If after all this I actually wish for your forgiveness, we'll find it's against the law. I have to destroy evidence, consult a lawyer, then testify to a box of peers that it's all insanity, forgive those umpteen sardines, and send them home. We love everybody and we're so sorry. Please love us and leave us alone. Stop locking us up in courtrooms and let us determine our own misdemeanors, or at least give us forgiveness as an option. It is important to note, governments, just like countries, borders, laws, and other abstract concepts, do not actually exist. It sure seems like governments exist since they have the power to murder, steal from, or imprison their populations for whatever whims tickle their fancy, but in actual fact, they do not exist. Only people exist. People in fitted uniforms exist. Police, soldiers, politicians, prison guards, public school teachers, and welfare recipients exist. The people who work for and benefit from the system are the system. Without people willing to murder, steal from, or imprison their fellow brothers and sisters in the name of government, there is no government. What government would we have if no one showed up on election day? Who would shake us down if no one paid up on tax day? Who would brainwash our children if no one sent them to public schools? Who would fight foreign wars if no one would be a soldier? If people stopped working for the government, the government would cease to exist. If people stopped voting, if people stopped paying taxes, the government would cease to exist. Police, soldiers, politicians, all other government workers and welfare recipients are the beneficiaries of our stolen money. They are all upstanding, parasite citizens employed by a parasite system to parasite off everyone else. They are all anti-entrepreneurs, actively working against the free market. They are people who, through their actions, agree with, enable, and enforce violence and coercion against their fellow man. They grant themselves the legal right to counterfeit their own currency and imprison anyone else who tries. Their paychecks come from the taxes we are all forced to pay them. Their means of subsistence is counterfeit and theft. And these thieves have the power to put us in prison if we don't willingly hand over our hard-earned money, whenever and however much they ask for. Governmental literally translates to mind control. It's time people realize they've been brainwashed by their mafia governments. Stand up and say to all government employees a big no thanks for your service. To all the soldiers and policemen, to all politicians and government employees around the world, consider this a big no thanks for your service. Your paychecks all come from money stolen by force from your hard-working fellow countrymen and women. 
Your employer, your national government, is 100% funded by tax money, taxes which your populations are forced to pay under threat of kidnapping, imprisonment, and often murder. To be employed by an immoral and criminal organization like a statist government is immoral and criminal. To receive stolen money and call it your salary is immoral and criminal. I implore all government workers to leave your jobs and pursue an occupation with real integrity. Find a way to earn money without stealing from everyone. Get a job where customers pay you voluntarily. I know it's not as easy as just forcing people to pay your salaries, but it is the moral thing to do. And to everyone else, let your soldiers, police, and politicians know, no thanks for your service, and no, we don't support the troops. We don't support any occupation built on stolen money, much less an occupation built on the blood of millions of innocents. We send young men and women off to kill and be killed, maim and be maimed, all for the propagation of corporate imperialism and statist hegemony. Then, if and when they ever come home, demoralized and depressed, ridden with regret and post-traumatic stress, we herald them as heroes. But the truth is, every time a soldier leaves his home country, he becomes a terrorist. If you're interested in defending your country and protecting your family for free, join a local militia. If you're interested in leaving your country to attack other people's families for money, join the national military. The former is respectable. The latter is irreputable. And now, coming to you from out in the ether, Eric Dubay and Renaissance Radio. Hello, and welcome to Renaissance Radio. I'm Eric Dubay, and I'll be your host from AtlanteanConspiracy.com. I wanted to do my first podcast and call it Solutions to the System, because we can go on all day about the global conspiracy and international bankers, secret societies, political corruption, but at the end of the day, it's all just a bunch of hot air unless we're going to do something about it. And what can we do about it? What can we do in our day-to-day -day lives to combat, to counteract, to non-comply, or to just move away from the system and create our own path, walk our own unique natural paths? I've created a list of a bunch of things I thought of and broken them into categories uh, spirituality, activism, education and media, economics, and health. And I think between these five areas I've come up with quite a few things that we can do in our day-to-day -day lives to combat the system, to create a better dream as it were. So I'll start with spirituality. I think on a meta level this is really a spiritual battle between good and evil, if you will, both existing in the self, and since the whole world is the self, then we need to heal ourselves spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. So, actually, let's start with health. So to heal the planet, you've got to heal yourself. Because the, the universe is the self, right? It's the expression of us, quantum physically, as well as uh, internally, we can feel that we are one with everything. So to heal the big I, we need to heal the little I. So there's a lot of diseased, unhealthy people walking around, and how can we get healthy? Well, dis-ease comes from a lack of ease, so stress is one of our main things we want to uh, deplete. We want to get rid of all stresses in our life. One way to do that is deep breathing. Whenever you can, take the deepest breaths into your stomach, 
Breathe in as deeply as possible. Hold it a little bit. Let it out slowly. Repeat that process. If you really get into it, it's called pranayama or qigong breathing. And there's a lot you can learn and a lot of benefits you get from it. From health to energy um, to relaxation and many other things. So practice deep breathing and yoga. Yoga is a system of stretching and balancing, strengthening the body. Uh, I don't think of it as so much of a, as a hobby, as mandatory upkeep for having a human body. Just like eating and drinking, you gotta breathe, you gotta stretch. Right, uh, an old, dry twig will break when force is applied to it, but a young, flexible. Uh, wet uh, twig will bend. Uh, think about like if a gymnast was on skates and she slipped and did a split. She's used to doing splits. It's no big deal. She gets up, brushes herself off, and goes about her day. But what if a big fat guy, uh, very unhealthy, has never stretched a day in his life, what if he's on skates and he does an accidental split? He would end up with torn ligaments, torn tendons, uh, bruised legs, probably be in a wheelchair for a while. So just think about that. Yet if he had done a little bit of yoga, uh, that wouldn't have happened. So yoga is, is body upkeep, preventative um, medicine, if, if you will. So we want to de-stress. We can do that with deep breathing, yoga, massage, reflexology, chiropractic adjustments, herbal medicines, detoxing like uh, enemas or other herbal detoxes, clears out the system, uh, fasting, give your organs a chance to rest and fast for a day a week or fast for, for a few days and try it out. Uh, see how good you feel, how light you feel. Um, get a juicer and start juicing some fresh fruits and vegetables. And have that as your first meal every day. That'll energize you and pump up your health. Try acupuncture or Reiki energy healing. Uh, get the life force energy moving. Tai Chi or Qigong Pranayama. These are all great practices and healing modalities. And you know, if you keep your body in an alkaline, as an alkaline environment, uh, cancer, for one, cannot grow and existing cancers will go away. And most diseases uh, just can't manifest in an alkalized body. So think about alkalizing both with water and with leafy green raw vegetables. Eat as many as you can. Which brings us to vegetarian, vegan, or raw. Uh, if you're trying to heal, um, you're not going to want to be eating meat, uh, both on a body level and on a spiritual planet level. Uh, killing just for your food, just because it tastes good, uh, is not a very positive way of being on the planet. And uh, eating vegetarian, you promote good health both internally and externally because you're not torturing animals, imprisoning them, genetically modifying them, chaining them down, or doing any of the other atrocious things that factory farms do nowadays. Um, eat superfoods. Eat wheat. Drink wheatgrass juice and spirulina, chlorella. Eat fruits and vegetables that are in season at the time. Those are the best for you. And consume lots and lots of natural, organic, whole foods. Um, try not to eat stuff that comes in a package so much. Stuff with preservatives, additives, chemicals, or dyes in it. Try to eat natural, organic, whole foods, and stay away from things like high fructose corn syrup, aspartame, GMO, MSG, fluoride, sodas, 
right? Sodas and um, gum have aspartame in them. It's terrible for you. Sodas also have phosphoric acid uh, to cut the sweetness because they add so much aspartame and uh, sugar, not for the taste, but for the drug effects. They have to cut it with phosphoric acid so they won't gag from the sweetness. And that acid causes stomach ulcers and other problems. Uh, so, I mean, they put that stuff in sodas just to get you addicted. Coke is called Coke because it originally had cocaine in it. Try to stay away from those and all white flours, white breads, white sugar, white rice, all that stuff. Move into the whole grains, whole uh, you know, brown sugar, brown rice. Uh, stay away from alcohol and and cigarettes. At least the uh, cigarettes they give you. If you're going to smoke tobacco, just roll the tobacco. Because regular cigarettes, pre-rolled, have like 30 or so known carcinogenic chemicals that they add to, to the tobacco, to the mixture. So that's the worst you can get. And alcohol, again, pretty much the worst. It's terrible for your health. Meanwhile, there's things like cannabis, ayahuasca, peyote, magic mushrooms, and other natural uh, entheogens, natural healers, healing agents um, that are made against the law thanks to alcohol companies, tobacco companies, and pharmaceutical companies who want and maintain a monopoly over uh, healing. But these things uh, are spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical healers. And, you know, think about using natural herbs and natural plants, or as Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine. Think about what I'm saying with the yoga, massage, de-stressing, deep breathing, alkaline water, vegetarian, raw foods, superfoods, organic, whole foods, staying away from the things I've said to stay away from, and then taking in maybe some of these things like uh, ayahuasca, peyote, magic mushrooms, or cannabis, and see if they enhance uh, your experience on all levels. Meanwhile, you might think about staying away from things like vaccines, which contain mercury and formaldehyde, which are very dangerous, and the legal pharmaceutical drugs they push on you, which contain coal and tar derivatives and all of these cancerous chemicals, which never seem to get rid of your disease, they just cover up your symptoms. You know, you don't have a headache because you have a Tylenol deficiency. You don't have a stomach ache because you have a Pepto-Bismol deficiency. Uh, you have problems, diseases that are being created in other aspects of your life. And using pharmaceuticals or vaccines or say radiation chemotherapy or unnecessary surgeries to take care of these problems uh, is rarely your best option. So think about stepping away from the vaccines, pharmaceuticals, uh, radiation, and surgery that's promoted by most Western medicine. Try to use only natural skin and body products. Um, you know, there's all these chemical-ridden products like big-name creams, lotions, soaps, shampoos, gels, dyes, deodorants, toothpastes, cosmetics, perfumes, colognes, dish and laundry detergents, bathroom cleaners, insecticides, sprays. Uh, most of us just buy those off the shelf and they are filled with chemicals that get in our lungs, on our skin, uh, and inside us. So, but there's natural alternatives to all of those things. You can get natural creams, lotions, soaps, uh, you know, mangosteen or honey soaps, butterfly pea or tamarind shampoos, uh, you know, natural gels, natural dyes, stick deodorants, 
herbal toothpastes with no fluoride, natural organic cosmetics. There's mascara in most, uh, I'm sorry, there's mercury in most mascaras, and there's lead in most lipsticks. And again, so many carcinogenic chemicals in these cosmetics, while there's perfectly good natural organic alternatives um, that are nobody seems to be using. Perfumes, colognes, same thing. If you have to use the chemicals, please spray them on your clothes instead of your body. Uh, dish, laundry detergents, bathroom cleaners, all these things. Find the natural alternatives and buy from these companies that are promoting natural organic products instead of just buying what's easy, convenient, and maybe cheaper on the store shelves, all these chemicals that are in these chemical companies. Think of all the problems that these factories are creating. Do you want to promote them or do you want to promote smaller companies that are making natural organic type stuff? Okay, so that's my health section. Moving on to spirituality. They call this the truth movement, the 9-11 truth movement, I guess. So I'm somewhat a part of that. I don't really care for that title because it's quite presumptuous to call a movement the truth movement like they have a monopoly on truth. But if we have to be branded by that term, how about change the truth movement to being the kind of truth that we can be sure of, and that is being true to our word, actually being truthful and having integrity, uh, saying what we think and having the ability to say when we're wrong, as well as having the ability to discern but keep an open mind. Uh, I mean, think of the change you can institute in the world just by being truthful. And I mean true a hundred percent of the time. If you make a decision to be true to everyone in your life one hundred percent of the time, you don't lie just because it's convenient or you lie because you can get some advantage or some edge. You don't lie for any benefit of yourself. You tell the truth for the benefit of yourself and everyone else. You stay true to your word. That would mean you can't cheat on your girlfriend or your wife, right? That's lying. That means you can't, you know, something as little as tell those little white lies. Be truthful. Have real integrity. That'll change your life completely. And that will change the world because it's a rare thing to come across people that are truly sincere, tell the truth 100% of the time to 100% of the people, and have real integrity. So I'd love to see a truth movement based on that kind of truth instead of the presumptuous 9-11 uh, type truth that they brand us with. Another thing we can do is follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Just always treat everyone else how you would wish to be treated. And then you don't really have to worry about anything else because you have done what you feel is right. And anyone that judges you is really just playing out their own insecurities and problems. So just follow the golden rule and be confident uh, as you treat others the way that you would wish to be treated. And that means in thought as well as action, right? You don't just do good and then think negative thoughts. Um, you have to start at the root and think, you know, truly forgive and practice unconditional love for everybody so that you're not just trying to do good deeds, but still harboring a lot of negativity, uh, vengeful thoughts, frustrations, annoyances, grievances, these kind of things. So, pr 
practice unconditional love and forgiveness. Make a game with yourself to see how quickly you can forgive yourself and everyone else. Anything in the world that puts you over the edge and brings you into a negative state of being, how quickly can you forgive and get back on track? How quickly can you calm and quell the problems of the mind to get back to the heart center where you unconditionally love and forgive even this, even whatever it is in this situation that's gotten you down? Um, be still and meditate. Get comfortable with being alone. Kafka has this great quote. Um, it's, what is it? All of man's problems could be, or would be vanquished if he could just sit alone in a room with himself with nothing to do. Something like that. Meaning that we create all these problems in ourselves and in the world, really, because we just can't sit still by ourselves in a room with nothing to do. We're, our minds are so toxic that we just create all of these problems in our lives and in society because we haven't found the time and the space, the stillness, to just be alone with ourselves and meditate. And when people do do that, like Jesus or Buddha or whoever, these prophets, these, these, the, these people go off by themselves, off into the desert or meditating under a tree for a long time. They live with themselves, with nothing to do. Then they come back to society and everybody thinks they're like enlightened. All they've done is settled their selves. They've become still and clear like a mirror, like a pool of water, and they just reflect other people because they don't have all their all that stuff going on, all the and all the thoughts, negative thoughts in their head all the time, emotions, negative emotions pounding them all the time. Uh, if you can just be still, like a pool of water, then you reflect the insanity of the world back at people instead of being all agitated like ripples, and then they can't see themselves in you. They can't see themselves as a mirror in your being. And so you, your ripples run into each other and you create all these problems in society. So be still and meditate. Be non-judgmental. Break the habit of judging yourself and others. And don't concern yourself with others' perceptions of you. So, you know, in your head, the, the judge and the victim, they're there all the time. Uh, judging everyone else in your own performance in every situation, often playing the victim in different situations. Try to break free of that. Try not to judge uh, positives or negatives or benefits or disadvantages to things and just be with things. And don't worry about what, try not to worry about what people think of you. Um, just plant seeds and let them grow. You know, don't worry if people think you're going to be crazy if you tell them about international bankers and secret societies. Just be yourself. Say what you got to say. And don't judge yourself. Don't worry about other people judging you, because they will, and they will gossip. And everybody will do what they'll do. You can't control that. But you can control yourself and to not judge people even in thought and to not play the victim even in thought. So be empowered and confident and break that habit of playing the victim or the martyr. Listen to people. Actually listen without thinking, judging, analyzing, or anticipating the next thing you're going to say. Actually Clear your mind of thoughts when you're talking in a discussion with anybody and actually listen to what they're saying. No mental clutter, just true listening. You can 
change the world just by being a good listener. Drop addictions, attachments, limiting beliefs, and base desires. So see what you're attached to. What are your addictions? What beliefs limit the things you do and say? And what base desires do you allow to control yourself when you could work from a higher plane? Try to remove fear and ego and replace it with love and compassion. When you feel fear, try to relax into love and get rid of that stress and that clenching that fear brings in every situation and try to remember the truth which is love, infinity, there is no such thing as death. All fear is fear of death. And all life is everlasting, and only in transition. What we call death is just a major transition, just another bardo, just another state of being, just a new dream. Whenever you start a dream, you never know where it starts. You're just there. You're suddenly in it. Death is just another one of those. Remove the fear of death and remove the ego ego being the separate sense of self, the little me that always wants pleasure and uh, is always looking out for its own base desires. Try to replace that with love and compassion, uh, empathy for other people, and leading by example. Try to be like the spiritual teachers. Don't merely follow a religion but be like the Avatar. Jesus didn't want a bunch of Christians running around following him. <laughs> Buddha didn't want a bunch of Buddhists. They wanted a bunch of Buddhas. They wanted a bunch of Christs. They want people to express their uniqueness and not just blindly follow uh, their words and create strict dogmas and doctrines and rituals and traditions and uh, maintain hierarchical structures based on all of this. No. I mean, they want, wanted you to look inside yourselves and find the truth that they found by looking inside themselves. So whether you're religious or spiritual or a-spiritual, whatever you are, try to be like the spiritual teachers that founded these religions instead of merely following the religions. So that's my uh, spirituality section. For economic solutions, stop paying taxes. If we don't fund them, then they're not, uh, they don't have our consent, right? If you don't believe in the system, if you don't think your representatives represent you, then don't pay your taxes. Get educated and look into the fact that the income tax, for instance, is unlawful, and there's actually no law that states that you must pay it. Uh, watch America Freedom to Fascism, for instance, to get a look into that. Um, I mean, just think about this. If governments are going to exist at all, shouldn't the first thing they do for us be to provide everyone at birth with a piece of free, untaxed land so that we have a place to build a shelter, we have a place to grow our own food, and we can cure homelessness and hunger right there, and everybody has their own place. But they don't need to work full-time the slave system to maintain their lifestyle. They can work if they want to, or they can just have a happy, simple life, farming their own foods, living in a shelter that they built on the land grant granted them by government. But governments don't do that. All around the world, governments instead make you pay taxes, property tax, so we, and they maintain the title so you just have a deed anytime 
they can claim eminent domain, they want to build a road or a nature preserve on your land, they take it away from you. And then every year, they make you pay property tax. So how is it even your land? You have to work all the time just to maintain it or rent it from someone else. So you get sucked into the system. And then all the money you make, they take a part of it for their taxes. So you see how it's a tax farm? If these governments wanted you to be free, then they could, should, and would give you, a, say, a half an acre plot of land at birth, free and untaxed, so that you can be a free citizen. And there's plenty of land to do that. Someone's done the math, and it's like, everyone in the world, 6.8 billion people, could have a half acre of land given to them at birth, and it would only take up the area of Australia, and you'd have the rest of the world left over. So this is doable, easily doable. Everybody could have a place to live, food, a shelter, and wouldn't even have to work from birth. Uh, that's easily doable, but we are kept in a position of scarcity uh, so that a few rich parasites at the top of this parasitic system can maintain their easy lifestyles working off the sweat, blood, and tears of the people at the bottom of the hierarchy. So, first solution is to stop paying taxes. Second solution is to get out of debt. Get out of debt. Live within your means. Thrifty, but not stingy buy and save consciously. As long as you're not unconsciously just going out and shopping and spending all your hard-earned money, then you can start to save more money and spend less money. Meanwhile, maintaining just the same level of happiness, a lot of people spend money to get, bring them pleasure. But then, because they've spent the money and gotten that pleasure, now they have to work which is not pleasure, it doesn't bring them pleasure, it brings them suffering. So they're stuck in a cycle of suffering through work so that they can pay for their pleasures. So try to suffer through less work and pay for less pleasures while maintaining the same amount of happiness so that you can live within your means and not have to work your entire life away. Then you can start to follow your bliss and your passion and try to make money with it. Start to have some free time and start to decide what gifts do you have to give to the world? What business or thing could you create, a product or service, that you would be completely blissful and passionate if you could make money doing that thing? And you start doing it. Eventually, you shouldn't have to work for any corrupt corporations or controlling bosses, eventually you'll be making money doing what your heart wants you to do. When you do spend money, try to buy locally from non-corporate sources and boycott those big corporations by not working for them or buying from them. You know, Walmart, Monsanto, don't buy GM foods, don't, don't work there. Uh, buy locally from farmers markets and work locally for families instead of empowering these corporations with your money and your sweat labor. If you do have money uh, in paper or in you know numbers in a bank account as opposed to tangible assets, think about transitioning into tangible assets by buying storable foods, water, seeds, gold, silver, other precious metals, tools, weapons, and tradable commodities so that you can get out of paper debt currency and into things that actually have and hold value. Because as the dollar devaluation continues as inflation rises, as they keep printing more debt currency, uh, those numbers in your bank account are not going to mean as much, and it's going to be actual tangible assets in your hand 
that will mean the difference between uh, rich and poor, life and death. Another thing is grow a garden, start a co-op, or grow your own sprouts or grasses that you can uh, juice. Um, if you have all your own food, that's a big uh, expense cut out. And if you're eating your own raw fruits and vegetables, it's pretty much the best, healthiest diet you can have. So that's a great solution, as well as getting off the government energy grid. You know, they won't have to build so many nuclear power plants if everybody's uh, got their own solar power, for instance. Um, there's lots of ways that you can get off the government grid and start creating your own uh, renewable energy. So those are my economic solutions. Next is education and media. Um, you know, the government schools, uh, they're not the only way you can homeschool, you can tutor, you can find alternatives to government indoctrination. So research subjects that personally interest you at that moment. The education system just treats people like robots and machines, just cranks you through the system and tries to force you to memorize and then standardizes the results of everything into this little machine where all humanity is sucked out of it and the only people that excel are little left brain prisoner robots. And that's not what education is meant to be. It's not what it is at all. That's indoctrination. True education has to come from inspiration and from your personal passion to learn something new at that moment, whatever interests you. So obviously, you know, government schools don't promote that in any way. Homeschooling certainly can, tutors certainly can, and just your own autodidactic learning using the internet, books, and independent media. Turn off the government corporate messages on TV, radio, newspapers, and magazines, and actually get interested and involved in finding the truth about everything, everything that interests you in that moment. And keep an open mind. Know that you're just a subjective interpreter of all the information, all the different theories and uh, evidence for different things but be discerning at the same time. Research, uh, familiarize yourself with important subjects so that you can know more about them for your own benefit and then help others and be more able to help others to uh, come to the same understandings that you have through your research. Okay. And the last little bit is activism, more the traditional kind of stuff to get the word out to try and educate people. Solutions to the system, like uh, creating a blog, website, radio show, documentary, music, anything creative, and put positive messages in there, put messages that expose important truths. Um, make a point to talk with friends, family, neighbors, and co-workers about some of these issues. You know, don't go in there, uh, say, 9-11 was an inside job and alienate everyone in the room type of thing, but instead listen very constructively and hear where you agree with people, right? People inherently know the system is is failing and they know there's problems politically and socially and economically. Listen to where they are and see where you can agree with them and help their understanding along uh, based on the research you've done. So make a point to listen effectively and then discuss effectively with people in your social sphere. And then burn DVDs, make pamphlets or posters hand them out. You can send mass emails with links and videos to your email lists, or you can have viewing parties of important documentaries. 
you know, there's lots of great documentaries and just mention in passing about some stuff someone gets interested invite them over for dinner and, and watch one of these truth type documentaries and, and talk about it and boom you've awakened another sheeple uh, wear shirts with important messages on them you know like uh, AtlanteanConspiracy.com <laughs> You can write it on paper money or stickers or bathrooms write important websites or little quotes or uh, thought-provoking statements you can do these on shirts, paper money, stickers um, you can go to chat rooms, internet forums or like Second Life or other things and expose important information on there when I first started, before I had a website, I just went on Second Life and teleported around wherever there was big concentrations of people and um, talked about different, uh, well, shouted about different subjects and gave websites and then went and talked to people that would listen. And I went on different forums. At one point I was on like a hundred forums a day, just keeping up with different uh, message board um, articles I've written and then reply to people and talk to them about stuff. It's a lot of trolls and agents and just dumb people, but it's a good thing you can do if you've got, you know, some free time and an internet connection. Uh, start a video sharing channel or use social networking to help spread the word, like Facebook, Twitter, you know, use those things to our advantage in spreading important links and videos and uh, what not. You can call in to big radio shows and ask important questions of you know people like uh, Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh and all these kind of people. They got millions of listeners. Call into their shows and kind of shake things up a bit by asking them questions about political topics they might not usually cover. Um, Non-compliance just stop complying with everything that's invasive everything you don't agree with don't fill out the census forms don't walk through airport scanners don't register your children at birth don't fill out any government forms that say application registration or submission don't receive RFID tracking chips or consent to unwarranted police searches or seizures don't refrain from growing, possessing, or selling natural plants that insane men have declared illegal. Civil disobedience means politely not complying with any law with which you disagree. So think about where you stand and draw your line in the sand and maintain that. If that means not filling out the census or not walking through those backscatter scanners, then so be it. I'd say stand free, don't register your children at birth, don't register your cars, don't apply for licenses for marriage or to drive a motor vehicle. The government, you don't need the government's permission to get married or to operate a motor vehicle. You don't need to register your car with anyone. There's a lot of things like this you can learn about from the free man on the land movement. That's, that's the last thing I'd say for activism. Research the free man movement. Research the difference between the law system and the legal system. And learn what's lawful and what's legal. And learn how to separate yourself as the flesh and blood human being from the corporate fictional straw man that was created at your birth by your registration, your name in all capital letters. So, that about does it, I guess. Those are some things we can do in our everyday lives as solutions to the system. Things that we can do instead of just complaining or yelling around, yelling our heads off about this or that conspiracy to this or that person that is or isn't listening to us. There's a lot of these things that we can do in our day-to-day -day life 
that has a healing effect on our own self, which in turn heals the universal self, which is the one, the one consciousness, the one being that we're all part of its dream. So let's create a better dream.